What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I am finally back with a brand new video. I think it's been about a week since I made my last video. Um, I don't know how many of you caught the message I posted a few days back, but if you didn't catch that message, uh, the reason I've been gone is I've been pretty sick. Um, about a week or so ago, that last video that I posted on that video, I actually was talking about how tired I was, and I was talking about how I hadn't slept much in the past few days at that point. Um, and I think, you know, just the lack of sleep, you know, it just got to me, lowered my immune system. And uh, I ended up one, with one of the worst sicknesses I've had maybe ever. Um, normally, I'm not really someone who gets sick very often. Um, I think that was probably my third time, which I'm still overcoming, if you can hear my voice and whatnot. Um, I'm not fully back, but I'm, I've got my energy back and whatnot to the point where I can feel like I can make a video and I'm kind of, you know, getting back to normal to a certain extent. But generally speaking, I think that was my third time that I've been sick in the last 15 years or so. So it's not something I deal with very often, but when I do get sick, I unfortunately seem to get hit pretty hard. Um, you know, I think my, my temperature was about 105 on those ear thermometers, which are a little lower. So I'm thinking my actual temperature was probably around 106 degrees at the highest point that I measured. And uh, obviously that's getting to the place where it's fairly dangerous and you want to lower your temperature. Um, you know, I just had, didn't have no energy. I just so fatigued, uh, just a really bad flu, I think. But um, yeah, but anyways, guys, I am back. I'm looking forward to continuing this journey to learn about all things British and Irish. And, uh, you know, since I was sick, I thought it would be really cool to uh, dive in and learn some of the differences between the healthcare systems in the US versus the UK. You know, I've done one other video, if I'm not mistaken, on the NHS itself. And although I learned quite a bit in that video, um, you know, the NHS and the healthcare system in the UK, and also Ireland's got its own separate healthcare system, I'm guessing, um, you know, it's going to take a big subject matter like that is actually going to take numerous videos to really quite, you know, understand on a deeper level. And um, so although I've learned some things, I've got a ways to go. And I kind of thought it'd be pretty cool to compare the differences. I don't know why this says insurance on here. I think that is a mistype of a word because, um, you know, I was actually looking at when I typed in, what I typed in looking for and found this video was um, U.S. versus U.K. healthcare systems. I think something like that. And uh, I briefly looked at the top of the description of this video, and it talked about how uh, it was talking about the healthcare systems. So I think this video is going to be about the actual healthcare systems and not so much insurance. So um, yeah, guys, I really don't know what to expect here. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to get going and uh, learning some new things and. Uh, so anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out the USA versus UK healthcare systems. Healthcare systems cannot be more different when we compare the United States and the United Kingdom. The United States has the largest private sector system, while the United Kingdom has one of the largest public sector systems. Both systems are highly respected and have world-class health outcomes. But the UK healthcare, otherwise known as the National Health Services, NHS, has way fewer health outcomes variation across its population when compared to the US. If you want to discover the main differences between both systems, make sure that you stick around to the end of this video. Healthcare in the US is almost exclusive by private sector providers. Hospitals are owned by either for-profit or non-profit organizations. Most of the people in the U.S. have access to healthcare through a blend of private health insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid programs. Or nothing at all <laughs> in a lot of cases, man. I can't tell you how many years I existed as an adult that I would had no health insurance at all. I was just, you know, you just don't have it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, get, I do got health insurance now, but it is very lacking, which is, is kind of reason why I wanted to, you know, why this was the first video I wanted to, or the first subject matter I wanted to check out coming back from being sick is because, you know, when I was sick, I realized, you know, as I was, as my, as my fever was increasing, I was like, oh man, man, if it gets too much higher, if I can't get it lower enough myself, I may have to go to the hospital. And I was thinking, but man, I don't, the thought that comes in my head is like, I don't want to spend thousands of dollars 
just to go lower a fever. Um, you know, luckily I, you know, I was able to, uh, take care of that myself. Generally speaking, uh, things like that. I usually can, you don't really need to take anything. If you want to lower a fever, you just do what they did back in the day. You use peppermint essential oils, you use, uh, you know, lukewarm washcloth and you put them or even cool washcloth and put them on your, uh, ankles and your wrists or your feet on your forehead, things like that. And that, that usually will do the job. If not, then you go and get in a lukewarm bath and that will generally do the job. Um, so usually you don't have to, but some people unfortunately get to that point. They have to go and go to the hospital to take care of that stuff. And it's like, man, they're going to get a bill for thousands of dollars. Obviously their life is worth that, but you know, it just reminded me that I'm in a place to where I literally would press myself to the edges before I would actually get assistance because it is so expensive, even with health insurance, but my health insurance isn't that good. Uh, it really doesn't cover much, uh, you know, you know, it's just basically it's a way to make sure you don't go bankrupt as all health insurance really is uh, for a lot of people. It's like you, you buy this health insurance just in case something massive happened. That way you're at least, uh, you can't get millions of dollars in debt or something like that. It, it'll limit it. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, let's continue. Medicare is a federal program that provides health coverage if you are 65 years or older, mm -hmm. no matter what income you have. Medicare also provides coverage for people with disabilities, even if they are under 65 years old. Medicaid, on the other hand, is a state and federal program that provides health coverage if you have a very low income and cannot cover your health and to a lot of kids. Yourself. The remaining people who are not covered by private insurance, Medicare or Medicaid will have to rely on their own financial resources to cover their health and medicine expenses. The United Kingdom healthcare system, otherwise known as the National Health Services, NHS. NHS, is an ideal example of socialized medicine and a single-payer healthcare system. This means that healthcare is provided by a single payer, which is the British government, and is funded by taxpayers of the United Kingdom. The appointments and treatments are provided for free to patients, as are most of the prescription drugs. Well, let's re-emphasize <coughs> that it's paid by taxes, so it's not truly free. But the NHS is. is not entirely free. There are some services that require patients to pay, such as dental and eye care. But the fees are comparably low to the U.S. fees. The maximum cost of receiving any drug prescribed by the NHS is $12. The United Kingdom wow. does allow employers to offer private health man. insurance plans to workers. That reminds me. Uh, I remember, like, I'm not someone that really takes prescription drugs. I, I, I just don't. Uh, you know, if I had to for, like, I don't know if there was some sort of I can imagine being in some sort of horrible accident and and the pain is so unbearable at that point, maybe. But generally speaking, blood pressure, stuff like that. They have tried to put me on this stuff before. And I just like, no, nah, I'll just change my diet. You know, I'll just do different things. Uh, I tried to avoid it. I, I'm not a big fan of the, you know, taking a bunch of stuff until it's completely necessary. Um, but I remember, what was it? It was some, I can't even remember what it was now. It was like years back. I remember needing some sort of like, was it, a, did I have a rash or something? I don't remember, but it was some sort of ointment that I was supposed to get for, I don't, was it a burn? I don't even remember what it was for, honestly. It was like, it's been like maybe 10 years ago or something. And I remember going up there like, oh, okay, yeah, because I need to get this prescription filled. And it was like $800 for this ointment stuff. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Can you not just give me generic? Nope. They, uh, you can only get this name brand stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm not paying $800 for some ointment. So I guess I'm just not going to get it. And so, um, you know, that's definitely something people have to deal with here. And, um, you know, it's like, it is a little bit ridiculous. I'll, you know, when, because it is 2023, it's like, you know, we should we should all want to like take care of each other at least to a certain extent to make sure people can actually uh, you know you know don't die before they go to get assistance for example because people really look at that and they're like man I can't afford to get you know have a ten thousand dollar ER bill uh, just because I feel bad you know what I mean I can't get this thing tested you know what I mean like it's just that's that's where <laughs> 
I don't know. That's where I, I just don't, I'm not a fan of. It's like people, how many people are like sitting there and having issues, but they, they don't have any health insurance. And so they're sitting there like, I can't, you know, I think this is probably not a big deal, but I can't go find out because I cannot pay $10,000 on a medical bill after this is done. And it's like, and then they end up having, they even end up dying or something. You know, how many times does that happen? You got to wonder. It's like, I don't know. It's just, it, it, sometimes it's just like we, we need to take care of each other in certain circumstances. I mean, like, even, even if we don't in, a, in the U.S. go all the way to NHS type uh, socialized health care. You know, to where, every base, to where basically you're covered across the board. There should be... Uh, some some things like at the very least, people should be able to go to the emergency room when they feel like something seriously may be up with them without having to be concerned there's going to be a ten thousand dollar plus bill. It's just people hold back on doing these things because of that bill, and then and then it ends up costing them their lives or they end up getting some serious complications. But I mean, most people watching this. You know, especially if you're in the UK, probably agree with me on this, I would guess. Uh, but anyways, let's continue. Some of these workers decide to opt out of the NHS and receive their medical treatments privately. It is quite an advantage as private patients choose their specialists, mm. unlike NHS patients. Private patients also avoid waiting lists for non-emergency procedures, while NHS patients tend to wait for weeks or even months. Mm -hmm. When it comes to accessibility, NHS patients receive their primary care from general practitioners, which are referred to as GPs, who act as gatekeepers for secondary care. When it comes to accessibility based on age, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence otherwise known as NICE, consults Citizens' Council to help it sort through difficult ethical issues such as prioritization mm. of patients based on age, which is simply not allowed in the UK. Patients of all age should receive the same degree of access to the healthcare system. Now let's compare the US and UK healthcare system. The United States spends more on healthcare than any other country. When compared to the United Kingdom, the expenditures of the US healthcare system are approximately double the expenditures of healthcare system in the UK. Wow. It is worth mentioning that the United Kingdom's NHS services have a low cost when compared to other developed nations, according to the World Health Organization. I can see why that would be. I mean, it's... it's. I think you guys in the UK have... Uh, Doctors and stuff are sued less. I, you know, I think is I think the U.S. tends to be a very sue happy country, which is, you know, pretty ridiculous if you ask me. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Um, I think he said that it was about double the cost. Is he, he's talking about per capita, right? I mean, obviously, I would expect the cost, the actual overall cost of the country, is to be more than double in America, at least because the population is so much larger. Was the population about? Five, six times larger, five, I think it's five or six times larger. But um, but per capita, when you think of double the cost, that's that's crazy. It really is like. Yeah, anyway, let's continue. <laughs> UK spends around four thousand dollars per person, while the US spends ten thousand five hundred dollars per person. That means that the United Kingdom That's spends more around 9.8% of its GDP on healthcare, while wow. the US spends 16.9%. That's wow. a huge difference. But wait, there is always a trade-off for a low cost. The NHS is known for slow responsiveness time. When compared mm. to the US healthcare system, which ranks as number one for responsiveness, according to the World Health Organization, the US healthcare system is responsible... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I catching that right? Let me see. When compared to the U.S. healthcare system, which ranks as number one for responsiveness, according to the World Health Organization. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I do believe that probably is a trade off. Uh, that is the one thing that I can say. Don't have any experience in the U.K. Don't know. I'm sure the time frames will be different, you know, depending on if you go to a hospital in London versus if you go to a small town with, I don't know, 4000 people in the U.K. that has a hospital. Um, I'm sure the wait times are going to be different and whatnot, but as a whole, um, I've experienced high wait times. If you go back to where I'm from, uh, college town, um, and 
Uh, the wait times at the school hospital uh, are <laughs> through the roof. Uh, but we have a lot of people there, uh, coming in for all sorts of things all the time. It's one of the, the main hub hospitals, if you will, for the surrounding area. So you can imagine life flights get taken in there and just people come from all over. Um, but here, man, you know, I've been to the hospital numerous times and it's like, boom, you go in like literally three minutes later, you're in, you're back, you're back there being seen two minutes after that, you're sitting there in, in your own room that quick uh so i do believe the response time is probably accurate here and i do believe that is a trade-off what is the trade-off is that valuable enough for the trade-off of you know the the way we our healthcare system set up i don't know i'd say some people would say yes if they're in an emergency situation but uh as a whole again people are stuck at home wishing they could go to a doctor just because they, they have some something wrong with them and they don't know what it is. And then they hold off and don't because of the cost. And then it costs them, can cost them dearly sometimes. So it's like, it's just a trade-off. You know, there's going to be good and bad in both systems. You know, um, I can generally say here in America, I've, I've, the health services I've got have generally been really good. And, and like I said, most time the response times are, are quick unless you go to a certain hospitals. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I've heard good things about the U.K. system. You know, the fact that you guys can just, you know, go uh, if you need to. And then so that's that's pretty cool, man. Why can't we merge both really quick times, response, good response times with a NHS type system? And then you have like something awesome, you know? Um, yeah. The U.S. healthcare system is responsible for populations' wants and needs. The U.K. healthcare is financially constrained, <coughs> which will result in wants to be constrained. This is seen in the form of a long waiting list for non-essential medical mm -hmm. care, which is required by people in the U.K. And obviously, this is met by long waiting times. NHS patients wait an average of about eight weeks for treatments that require admission to a hospital four weeks for outpatient treatments, and two weeks for diagnostic tests. Wow. When it comes to life expectancy and infant mortality, the UK has a better ranking than the US. UK citizens have a longer life expectancy and lower infant mortality. In well, um, the infant mortality thing, I, I can't speak on. Um, you know, I think this goes back to what he was just saying that, uh, you know, in the US, we have both a wants and needs care system, I guess you can say. Uh, both are high up there, you know, in a way uh, they try to get both in as quickly as possible while in the UK, because of the way the system set up, uh, obviously needs are going to be taken care of first, which totally makes sense. Um, but when it comes to life expectancy, um, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the food quality. You know, that's something I've sort of learned in uh, since I've been on this journey. You know, I've learned that the food quality as a whole seems to be a lot better in the UK. Um, you know, we we have abundant food here in the U.S. and you can find very high quality food. I can find the most high quality food in the world. You know, I can I can find uh, grass fed raw milk, you know, which I buy from a local farm. You know, it's just generally speaking, a lot of cases you're going to pay uh, a lot more for that high quality food. And it's going to be a little bit harder to find uh, in your traditional grocery store compared to the traditional grocery store in the UK. But that's not really what this video is about, but I think that's one of the reasons why uh, the life expectancy tends to be a little higher in the UK, if you ask me. In 2017, life expectancy in the UK was 2.7 years higher than in the US. And the infant mortality rate is lower in the United Kingdom, with 3.9 deaths per 1,000 mm. live births, as opposed to 5.8 in the United States. Mm. The UK has a more acute care hospital beds per capita and fewer deaths related to surgical <coughs> or medical mishaps. So you can clearly see how both healthcare systems are different from each other. They both have pros and cons since yeah. they follow completely Absolutely. different philosophies. Tell us what you think about these different healthcare systems in the comments section and which one do you support. If you like this video, make sure to demolish that like button, subscribe and hit that bell button so you're... Oh, guys, well, I mean... I like both systems uh, for certain reasons. I like the response time 
and uh, how easy it is to get in and be seen, at least from my experience in the U.S. But I'm definitely not a fan of the cost. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the way it's set up to where you have to go and you have to go search out your own private insurance and, uh, you know, you have to kind of pay attention to things like deductibles and co-pays and all this other stuff. And you have to not only pay your monthly bill, but then when the time comes, you actually use it. You're probably going to get a bill for your deductible and, you know, you're going to pay a copay at the time of service and uh, there's co-insurance to think about. And sometimes you won't even know if the, if something's covered or not. And you've got to go and do all this research. You know, it's a mess. It's a, it's a mess. Our system is a mess in that way. You know, uh, it's just, I, I, like I said, you know, I, I know that it would be very hard in the U S because no one can agree on anything. Our, our, we're too partisan. We're too divided politically to uh, have any serious conversations. <coughs> Man, excuse me. I'm, I still uh, have a very dry cough right now. Uh, hopefully that'll be gone soon. But anyway, um, uh, I, I just think that people need to put aside their differences politically so we can actually make some good things happen here. You know, what if what if we could, for example, in the U.S., what if we could you know, get rid of Medicare and Medicaid and combine everything into one to where, you know, maybe maybe we can't maybe for some reason we can't get to the place of where we have the full stuff covered like you do under the NHS. But can we not get together and say something like, you know what, everybody deserves at least catastrophic health care, meaning if someone is in a car accident, they don't have to worry about a bill. If someone gets some kind of horrible disease, they don't have to worry about a bill. You know, the, the really bad things that come as a surprise in, in, you know, during a lot of people's lives, you know, you get these things and you don't want to, you don't have to worry about some bill, you know, uh, you know, maybe we can't, maybe we can't come to the place to where we can get prescription drugs down to $12 like the UK has, but can we, can we not, can we make it to where no one has to pay, you know, hundreds of dollars a month for their diet, for their insulin, if they're diabetic. And I mean, you know what I mean? Can we, or an EpiPen? Can we, can we make it to where people can not have to pay hundreds of dollars or whatever for an EpiPen? There's just like, there's so many improvements that we could make in the U S but n no one's willing to talk because the left and right, again, I, I, every time I see a video like this, I'm always reminded of, you know, most of our problems stem from the fact of number one, our politicians, number two, the fact that We've become so partisan and and everybody goes into their different you know tribes on the left or the right and no one's willing to talk to the other side. And that's not me. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here as someone that's kind of in the middle. I, I I agree with some things on the right. I agree with some things on the left. And and I and I, and I th you know and I'm willing to talk with anybody, you know, and I just wish everybody was like that because we could get some stuff done. Uh, but yeah, you know, and I'm sure people in the UK are like, you know, what can we, in a lot of cases, it sounds like, what can we do to, you know, lower wait times and, and maybe be able to get seen in the hospital before that average of eight weeks, uh, for certain things, you know, I, I, you know, both, both systems have pros and cons, like he said, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we just need to figure out how to improve these systems, but, Anyways, guys, I thought this was pretty cool. I thought it was a good video. Um, like I said, I, you know, because I've been sick, you know, I've just been thinking about the healthcare system. And so I just kind of wanted to dive in and learn a little bit more about the differences. You know, a lot of this I kind of had picked up a little bit, maybe on the NHS video and other things, but good rehash of the information. I do pick up, I did pick up a few little tidbits here, which are good. And uh, that's all I ask for in a video is to learn a few interesting new things. And I feel like that video was success for me that, at that point. Um, but I definitely want to learn some more about the NHS. I want to learn some about the Irish healthcare system as well. I haven't really looked into that yet. Uh, not really sure what it's called. Not even sure what to look for. But guys, if you have any ideas for other videos that you think I might would be interested in checking out, whether it's healthcare related or what, or anything else really, but please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I go through the comments. I spend probably about an hour every day in the comments sections. Uh, I go to different videos. First, I start with the video that I, of the day, like this video and uh, spend a little time in there. And then I go to uh, an assortment of other videos uh, from the past and kind of 
go and see what comments are, see if there's things people want to share in those, you know, so please feel free to share is all I'm saying, because even if I don't get to see your comment right away, there's a good chance at some point I will see it. Um, and uh, I always love it. I love it when you guys share uh, things with me, because that's how I find out about directions to take when I'm learning about the UK and Ireland. So, uh, yeah, guys, but I don't know if you can hear my voice, but uh, definitely got a little bit of dry cough. And uh, but, man, I feel so much better. I'm so happy to be here making a video because it's just I, I am getting back into my routine. And, um, uh, you know, I was pretty much bedridden for a few days there. And uh, I'm definitely not the type that's used to that. Uh, definitely not something I'm used to. And so um, just thankful to uh, start to be feel better. But, uh, yeah, guys done rambling. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.